What's up? What's up? Hello, hello. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's Chris Gillibo. So glad you are here. Thanks for coming. Um, this is day two of an all new series. Uh, let me know if you can see me and hear me. I'm still learning as I go. Day two as a YouTuber. Um, I already learned a couple things from yesterday. Uh, I said when I started yesterday that this is like, uh, you know, a very real world example of building the plane as it flies. Um, that is exactly what it is. Let me check on a couple of things. Oh, it looks like everything is working. Amazing. Um, yes, a, a, an example of building the world, building the plane as it flies. I did not feel ready uh, to start, you know, yesterday. Like I've had this idea for a while, um, but I kind of kept putting it off. And finally, I was like, you know what? I, I talk to people all the time about how they just need to go for it and they need to start before they're ready. So um, I should do the same thing, right? And the same thing this morning. Today is actually the very special day, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but I've had a lot going on, and I was like, oh, it would be great to start this, you know, 20 minutes later than I had planned. But um, the fun thing about doing things live is you have to do it live, right? And so I feel this tension a little bit because I want to make sure I prepare well. I want to make sure I, like, I respect people's time. I want to bring you something that's helpful and valuable. Um, like one of my pet peeves of listening to speakers is when a speaker gets up and is like, oh, I didn't have much time to prepare today, you know, just kind of bear with me because it, it basically shows that they don't respect the audience, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, why should I bear with you? You know, you, you should have respected my time. So I do try to prepare. Uh, but at the same time, there's this value of like, let's just do it, right? Let's just do it. And I want to make sure that if you're trying to think of something that you want to start, um, that you also like understand that there is a time to prepare and there's a time to, you know, do everything you can to get ready, but there's also a time to just kind of go for it. You know what I mean? There's a time to just be like, let's, let's go for it. Let's do it. Um, so this is all about finding the opportunity in a time of uncertainty. Hey, everybody, I'm just seeing your comments here. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth between, um, like what I'm talking about and teaching and the live comments. Uh, we had a lot of people watch the replay yesterday. And for some reason, the comments uh, weren't included. I'm not quite sure why. Like I looked uh, a little bit. I tried to try to do some research afterwards and couldn't quite figure it out. Um, but um, so I'll kind of like go back and forth in the in the interaction and the timeliness of the topic. So hello from somebody in India, somebody in Cleveland, Patty in Alberta, Daniel in Vancouver. Um, Jackie's on time by accident. Uh, well, me too. That makes two of us. Um, hello from Florida. Hello from Bangalore. And Pam says, congrats on the book launch. Yes, we're going to talk about that. Um, Mary is in Denver. Yes, yes, yes. Um, sorry for anybody that I missed. Um, OK, so let me know at any point during this conversation. You can post a comment or a question. And I will kind of go back to them, what it's all about, if you missed yesterday, uh, or just as a refresher. We are in this great time of chaos and disorder. And uh, so many things are being rebuilt, rebuilt, reconfigured. Uh, so many expectations questioned, assumptions no longer held true. And everybody's trying to figure out what to do. And so I decided, you know, that the best thing that I can contribute, because like, you know, I'm not a healthcare worker. I'm not like on the front lines. You know, I always want to say every day, big respect to everybody who's doing that. Um, you know, shout out to everybody who's serving in that way. Um, but I can't do that. So, so what can I do? Well, I realize a lot of people are facing tremendous economic uncertainty and uh, a lot of people are afraid and worried and anxious. And I honestly believe, even though I'm not trying to say that there's like a silver lining to COVID-19 or, you know, anything else that's changed in our world, I do honestly believe that people are going to experience tremendous shifts, you know, through this time and people are going to make a lot of brave, courageous uh, decisions. So I want to look at that kind of in a, in a systematic, uh, you know, process driven yet at the same time interactive way uh, through this series. So I'm going to be preparing some different material and stories every day. Um, we're going to have a question of the day, which I shall do in a moment here, um, and also a daily challenge. Um, so something for you to think through as well. I got an email that I want to read in a moment. Uh, hello from Portland. Hello from Maine. Hey, Pamela, Celia, Ivan, Portland as well. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, and T.M. T. Abbott says, I appreciate your transparency about starting before you're ready. Uh, yes, the example is helpful. Well, the example is true. Um, I'm glad it's helpful, but it's also the example is reality. So yes, um, so I'm going to read an email and then jump into a couple of things about quote unquote following your passion versus uh, following uh, something else that I'll talk about. Um, but it is it is two birthdays. Um, first of all, it's it is my birthday, so thank you. You're very kind to say that. 
but also it is um, the birthday of my brand new book, The Money Tree. Um, so it is a publication date by coincidence. I didn't say like, hey, I'm gonna like put a book out on my birthday. Just so happened, um, books always come out on Tuesdays and I knew this was coming out in April. So together with my publisher, uh, we determined this was the best day. So I'm very excited about the, having the book out in the world. I'm gonna be teaching using the money tree methodology throughout uh, this live series. But aside from the book, nothing is for sale. There's no back end, there's no course, there's no membership site. Uh, it really is just about delivering value. And so um, you can check out the book uh, on Amazon, Audible, Apple Books, wherever you get your books. Uh, if you can support a local bookstore by going to their website, a lot of them have online ordering processes now. Um, that's great too. But I'm happy to, for people to share the book, get it at the library, whatever. Like mostly I just want to reach people with this message. So we'll talk about it some more. So let me read an email and then I'm going to jump into this topic. Um, yes, thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. You're very kind. Appreciate the, the shout out. Um, Okay, so I actually got this email like a week or two ago, but I've, I've had it on my desk and been reading it. Um, when I first started talking about like, where is the opportunity in the time of uncertainty, I heard from a lot of people and I've been collecting these stories, which I'll be sharing. So this one came from someone who was featured on Side Hustle School. Um, her name is Lydia Crespo. Um, and she writes in to say, I was featured on Side Hustle School, episode 969 which by the way, if I ever reference an episode of the podcast, uh, you can go to sidehustleschool.com slash the number forward slash 969 in this case. You can hear more about her. And um, she said, I opened a brick and mortar shop with my sister back in November called Cozy Shop. In late January, we closed to do some renovations to the shop. We built out a community workshop space so we could host classes, parties, and meetups uh, focused around making art and getting crafty. Uh, we then opened on March 7th. Great timing, right? <laughs> well, uh, we are closed to the public now and have focused our efforts on improving the shop website, bumping up the release of new products, and taking all of our in-person workshops to virtual meetups and home kits. Uh, it's been a long couple weeks since we closed to the public, um, but we've done over $5,000 in new sales by pivoting quickly and not panicking. Um, so happy to walk through the details if need be. Stay cozy, Lydia Crespo, um, from the website and the business argamondefiance.com. Argamon and Defiance, the website is argamondefiance.com. Uh, so I loved what she said about, what did she say? Pivoting quickly and not panicking. I think these are, these are the keys. In fact, I would reverse the order and say the first thing is to not panic because that's what we all tend to do when we encounter some you know, extreme difficulty or even just something that's unexpected, a, hard sh a hardship, a setback, those are the right words. Um, we are kind of like, oh my God, you know, I, I, like this is so unexpected. I don't know where my money is going to come from, my salary to pay employees if I have employees. Um, you know, I just kind of throw my hands up in the air, or like bury my head in the sand or whatever you do with your head or your hands. And um, I think that's a natural reaction but it's also a very unhelpful reaction. So not panicking, but then also pivoting quickly. So not panicking and then pivoting quickly saying, okay, we built this event space out. Great time to be in the event business. Um, I understand that myself because I was supposed to go on a 40 city book tour starting yesterday, actually, uh, starting the day before publication date. And now I'm going to zero cities. Um, but you know, it's not a great time to be in the event business, but ultimately events are about community. Ultimately, events are about bringing people together, uh, sharing some knowledge or a shared experience, um, kind of establishing this like, you know, mutual or recognized identity. And so it sounds like that's what she was trying to do with her shop. And then when she realized she couldn't do that with her shop in person, at least, um, she found a way to, to take it uh, virtual. Um, so I liked that. I thought that was interesting. Um, okay, I want to give you a question of the day. So let me see if I can do this. I didn't actually practice this today. Um, let's see if I get this right. Question of the day. Okay, might actually work. We'll find out. Um, here's my question. Based on everything I've been talking about, um, what project will you start or finish during this season? Um, so of course, I mean, you know, the season of, of unknown, the season of TBD, um, the season of how long is, is this gonna take? Oh my God, before we can actually, you know, go back to living some of our normal lives. Um, and if you happen to be watching this later, well, you know, this is probably going to be a long extended season. So what are you going to use this time for? Um, how are you going to use this time for good? How are you going to use this time to uh, look back and say, 
wow, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic, that was crazy. Um, but I also did this thing. I started this, this thing for myself um, that I'd been thinking about for a while. Um, feel free to post your answer in the chat. I will share some of them if you are willing to be brave. Um, if not, that's okay. I'll talk about the project that I'm, I'm doing. Um, and so maybe this is something that you've had on your mind for a while and you just haven't, you know, moved forward with it. You have been kind of putting it off or you've been busy, you know, like I get it, we're all busy, but because so much has shifted now and people's schedules are different, people's physical locations, like their geography, their proximity to other people and their workplaces and such has changed. Maybe this can be a good time for you to actually kind of bump that up in priority. And maybe actually speaking of priorities, like you are looking at your priorities differently uh, and thinking, wow, you know, like th this is a serious, this is really a serious thing. I wonder if this causes me to think differently about that idea I had or about my values or what's important to me. What am I trying to achieve, accomplish, um, you know, et cetera. Um, and maybe that will give you a little bit of a, of a boost. Now, um, I also said, what project will you finish during the season? Because it could be something that you have actually started and you've been working on it very slowly, but this is the time for you to actually like, you know, get over the hump of whatever um, piece of it, whatever task uh, or project, you know, as part of it has been uh, holding you back. So what project will you start or finish during this season? It could be a side hustle, a new business. It could be something in the arts. Uh, it could be something with music. It could be some kind of nonprofit or charity work. Um, talked to somebody the other day um, who is, I need to get a picture of this. I'll do this um, tomorrow or the next day, who is making handmade masks. Like I know a lot of people are making face masks, but she was making some really beautiful artistic ones and selling them um, using Facebook and some other platforms. Um, so very timely, um, but also making art and finding a way to contribute. There's a charitable element to it as well. So what project will you start? Let me read a couple answers here. And um, then I want to talk a bit more about this topic of um, not following your passion. All right. Yes, thank you again for the birthday wishes. Uh, Vin from Mantra Medallions here. Um, have a question. Let's see. I run an online community for people on a diet, specialized diet. I'm interested in monetizing, but I don't want anyone to feel like they don't have access or information they need for that. That's a great question. Let me come back to that. Um, and, and if I, for some reason I forget because I can be kind of ADD, feel free to post just a little reminder um, before we close it out. That's a great question. All right, Jackie R is starting gourmet p cake pops. Gourmet cake pops, um, that's great. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, well, a fan of cake pops in general. I'm sure gourmet ones are delicious. Uh, Neha or Neha is learning Spanish. Sergio is a new website about teaching others how to design websites without code. That's a huge need, tremendous need. So many people uh, you know, want to start websites these days, but lack that technical skill. Um, and then Vin mentioned a little bit more about that project. Oh yeah, which I'm gonna come back to. Nikki wants to relaunch a productivity app that I think would be particularly appropriate these days with everyone working at home. Uh, for sure, thanks Nikki. By the way, everybody, Nikki Hajal is my, my genius web developer, my longtime friend uh, that I've been working with for more than 10 years. And uh, all my different websites, well, all the, all the good ones, all the ones that have really you know, thoughtful design and development, he has built those. We are actually working together on a project. Um, part of my project is this online book registry where people will be able to buy copies of The Money Tree for anybody else who's in financial need. Um, and my proceeds are gonna go to charity. There's a whole thing about that. So we'll share more about that with you soon. Um, should be ready in beta in the next few days. Ivan is starting a podcast called The Science of Birds. Awesome, finishing building a website associated with the podcast. Um, I've done several side hustle school stories about people who are really into birds and, and um, um, there's you know all kinds of ways to monetize things like that. People often underestimate um, the kind of projects that you can make money from. Josh is, is writing an ebook on accounting and finance for small business owners to better understand and drive their business. Um, I'm gonna say this name wrong, I'm sorry. Sharma is the last name, the surname. Run five kilometers, 100 days. That's awesome, very cool. Daniel's my app development project that I came up with in December, um, just started recently, but you got time to sink your efforts into it. Wonderful, I'll read a couple more here. 
Seaback teaching others the basics of web development and Pamela needs $600 to add to my budget a month to be able to breathe enough to focus on the side hustle, um, buying low and selling high. In addition to checking on neighbors and learning to make masks. I love the specific goal, by the way, I love, uh, you know, saying I need to make $600 a month, uh, you know, to add to my budget, to feel a little bit more comfortable and feel less pressure, um, during this time. So that is, that is wonderful. Um, that's great. So I mentioned my project. Um, that I'm building together with Nikki. Um, but in addition to that, let's see here, what else did I want to mention? I have all these notes that I have not referred to. Um, but in addition to that, my overall goal is um, to just kind of show up. And, you know, that's a phrase that I've been thinking about for a few different reasons lately. Um, but specifically, I mentioned the book tour. I was going to go out and do this, you know, extended book tour. And now I can't do that. So what I decided was I want to, I want to show up however I can through this new series. I'm doing a daily Instagram live as well. Um, that's just a little bit more, you know, it, it's not as focused on a specific topic, but just kind of seeing where people, people are at and answering questions as well. And, um, through whatever other forums, like I agreed to do a, a, you know, big zoom webinar for a group in Malaysia yesterday. And I have some more of those coming up. I'm on, I think 35 different podcasts coming out this week and all this stuff is free. You know, like I just want to show up and that's my commitment during this time. Since I was supposed to be in all these cities, I'm going to be here or elsewhere online, uh, talking to people, being as helpful as I can. So let's talk about um, passion and skill. And I am going to come back and tie in uh, Vin's question to this. Um, I'm committing to doing that. So hold me accountable um, if I don't. Yeah, I, I've often talked about, um, I've often like been curious about this question about passion. And, and uh, some, of the, some of the most classical you know, business advice that you hear, or especially when it comes to a lifestyle business, so not a big startup, um, but something that you're doing for yourself, you know, is like, okay, you know, follow your passion. I think there's a subtitle, a very popular book, you know, now is the time to like follow your passion to the bank or something. And I've always thought it's a little bit problematic because it's true that, that in life we're going to be the most successful and probably the most motivated when we're doing something that we are excited about. And I also believe that, um, you know, life is short just to be very real as we're, as we're seeing in lots of ways. And, you might as well spend your time on something that, that you enjoy, uh, because there are a lot of different things that you could spend your time on. So I believe that very much. I believe it passionately, I could say. However, you know, just following your passion or starting that, using that as a starting point is not always the best approach to figuring out what is my side hustle or what is my income generating project? What is the best way that I can, you know, create more freedom for myself, uh, establish, you know, security, give myself more options, allow me to quit my job if that's what I want to do, or at least give me the option. And what I've found is, you know, the, the most typical exercise that people go through when they're trying to start their side hustle is they make a list of all the things that they like to do. And either like, oh, I like to, you know, I like to play golf. I like to make cookies. I like to, um, you know, whatever it is that you like to do. I like to read Victorian novels, et cetera. And then they ask, how can I, you know, monetize that? How can I turn that into, into some kind of business? And it's not impossible. Like on Side Hustle School, my daily podcast, we've had, you know, 1200 episodes so far, uh, featuring all kinds of different topics, you know, from a woman who like picks up poisonous toads in Florida and makes thousands of dollars doing it, um, to people doing stuff with, with birds. I just talked in the virtual book launch the other day for the money tree about, um, this woman who founded birdsupplies.com. Now she had done very well with it. So it's not impossible, but the problem with starting with your passion is first of all, you may just want to do that for yourself. You may not necessarily want to turn, you know, golf or cookies or, you know, poisonous toads, I guess that's a stretch, um, into your actual business. Like you may actually find you're not enjoying it as much. Yeah. It, like the thing, that thing that you did for your passion was your escape. And it's okay to do something for an escape. It's okay to have, do something for art or for love or just for, just for enjoyment or for yourself, you know? So that's the first thing. Um, because again, life is short, you know, not everything has to, to make money. Not everything has to connect to a monetizable project, but then second, you know, let's assume that it is your goal, you know, to do this, um, to create that kind of monetizable project. Second, um, not everything that you are passionate about is going to be interesting and marketable and valuable to others. And I think that's really important to think about because ultimately what, what you want to do is combine 
something you are passionate about with something that's valuable to other people. I talked about this a lot in the hundred dollars startup uh, book I wrote, you know, also maybe eight years ago or something. Uh, what you're looking for is convergence. You're looking but you know, for the convergence between this is the thing that I love to do. And this is the thing that other people value. And so sometimes it can be more effective to get to that point instead of, uh, focusing on your passions, uh, focus on your skills, focus on what you are actually good at, focus on, you know, all the different skills you have acquired, the different knowledge that you have gained, the experience you've had, whatever education you've had. If you went to college, whether you went to college or not, like however far you got in the educational system, the non-traditional educational system, like if you've been watching stuff on YouTube or on Udemy or Creative Live or LinkedIn Learning or, you know, wherever you have acquired additional knowledge, um, thinking about those things, making a list of that, of those things, um, and then thinking about, okay, what do I do for my job? And what do I do for my job? Like both the hard skills and the soft skills. When I say hard skills, I mean like, you know, okay, if you're an engineer, then you have acquired, you know, certain programming languages perhaps, or certain way of thinking. Um, you know, if you're an accountant, then obviously you have like these financial accounting skills. Um, but, but the soft skills are often just as valuable. And we'll talk about that in a separate lesson, but soft skills are like, I'm really good at, at follow-up. I'm really good at, at productivity. Nikki mentioned earlier. Now, productivity is a great example of something that you're like, well, I'm really passionate about productivity. A lot of people value that, you know, so there's a lot of opportunity for convergence there. Um, and a lot of people have, you know, built really successful side hustles and businesses out of it. I was thinking in particular of um, these guys I know, I think they were originally from New York, um, but now they've expanded elsewhere. They started this business called Cave Day, uh, which was originally just about them, like these three guys, I believe, um, who just were all frustrated at their lack of, of progress in different things. And they just started, they decided to start a day where they came to one of the guy's apartments and they like, you know, put their phones up. They like threw them in a basket by the front door and they turned off the internet. Um, and then like they spent the whole day just like working on a prog on a project. And then they, they started posting about this and other people were like, I want to come and have a cave day. And so then they got some catering. Um, they turned it into a whole like event and now it's like, you know, more of a thing. Um, so productivity, you know, productivity, your interests, other people's, um, other people's, you know, what they find valuable, what is marketable. Let's see if there's any comments here and I'm going to come back. I have a couple more things to say about that. David, what's up, man? How's life in New Jersey? Uh, he says, wise words. I have a friend who loved baking until it became her side hustle business. Yes. Um, so you may love baking and you may love baking for a business, but you may not. So make sure you think about that. Um, Tina says, I want to start offering my shiatsu clients, stretches, exercises, meditation, self shiatsu, and other support they may need, um, at this time. I'm so glad you're doing that. Um, it's really interesting how many, um, how many things can become virtual or digital that we would not have expected, right? Uh, it's kind of, it's also like the world of remote work, how so many companies and, uh, bosses and employers thought it was impossible, you know, for their workers to be able to work from home. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, actually they can. So the same is true with you know, like exercise for a personal training is a great example. Like you, you, you have to be like, you know, in the space with your personal trainer or do you, right? Like now there's this huge boom in home exercise, um, you know, virtual workouts, virtual yoga classes, um, Peloton, other companies like that, that are, that are doing very, very well. Um, I talked as well about, um, in the creative live class I taught last Saturday, I talked about a woman who does online belly dancing classes, you know, belly dancing. She had workshops. Now she's got virtual bundles. Um, so it's really interesting how many things that you think couldn't be virtual or digital actually are. Um, okay. So I want to see if there's any other questions or comments. I want to circle back to Vin and I want to give you a challenge of the day. Um, so every day there's going to be a challenge or something that I encourage you to do or to think about. Um, I forgot to say all kinds of things, but this is how it works, you know, build the plane as it flies. So let me go back and read Vin's question again here. So Vin's talking about his side hustle. You can scroll up and see this. Um, if you are able to see the chat, if this is later and it's not there, then that's why I'm, I'm talking it through. So he has a question, um, running an online community for people on a low oxalate diet. Is am I saying that right? For people that are prone to forming kidney stones or have a few other conditions. I'm interested in monetizing, but I don't want anyone to feel like they don't have access to the information they need for their health. I was thinking of a low oxalate cooking course or giving away 50% of recipes via blog post and maybe a subscription for three to $5 a month 
for access to 100% of them in a nice searchable database. Um, just curious what you think. So, so Vin, here's what I think. The fact that you were asking that question already shows that you have great care and concern, you know, for people who have this need. And so I, I think the fact that you're even asking that question means you are cognizant of it throughout the process. And to even think like, I'm going to give away 50% of it. And if people just pay three to $5 a month, they can get the rest. Um, I think you can probably charge more than that or give away less than that and still provide something that that's valuable and helpful to people. Um, I mean, I, I assume there are some other resources for this. I assume there's more than one way to learn about this topic. Um, but if people even follow, you know, 25% of your recipes, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work to follow a recipe. Um, so I think, especially at a, a very low price point, it's not something you need to worry about. You could also have a, you know, a higher price point and then just offer some kind of scholarship, or you can offer, say, you could say like, do it as a pay what you will, or say, here is the price, you know, this is actually worth, you know, a lot more money. Uh, specialized diets, people spend a lot of money on their specialized diets. I mean, pe people will invest uh, a lot in that. Um, but then you say, okay, here's the price, but if for some reason this is a burden to you, uh, then, you know, let me know and we'll take care of it. I think that's maybe a better way than just saying, how can I price it like so, so affordable? Um, cause you're not going to be able to make much money on three to $5 a month. That's my, my business thought for you there. You're gonna need a lot of subscribers at three to $5 a month. Um, but thank you for that question. Um, let's see if there's any other comments and then let me go to the, to the challenge of the day. Ivan says, I'm a biologist who left academia to become a bird watching nature guide. Um, I love my career as a guide, but COVID-19 has thrown a major wrench in the gears for my travel business. I'm hearing from that from a lot of people I hear, um, since I used to work in the travel space or, I mean, I had a project where I went to every country in the world. So I, I knew a lot of travel bloggers. I'm hearing from a lot of people in the travel world, um, about their business being kind of, you know, turned upside down. Uh, the good news is, well, Ivan's already made my point for me. He says, I'm using my knowledge and passion to start a side hustle podcast about birds. What I was going to say is the good news is, you know, he acquired this knowledge, you know, to be a guide, but he still has the knowledge. So the knowledge can be deployed in, you know, lots of different ways. Um, okay. So here's the question, which is going to lead to our challenge. If you accept this principle about, you know, follow your skill, not your passion, uh, ultimately, first of all, skill and passion are going to be connected. This is another thing that people find out as they go along the way. If you pay attention to what you're good at and you, you kind of connect that to your monetizable idea, most of the time you're going to find that you're actually passionate about that thing that you're good at. Um, so you're not necessarily, you know, losing your passion or like doing something that you hate just because you're good at it. It doesn't usually work that way. The other thing is, you can be passionate about the act of creating freedom for yourself. And that's how it was for me when I started. Like, I think about this a lot when people are like, you know, your passion, your passion, love what you do. When I got started, I was selling stuff on eBay 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Now, um, I was going to say 21 years, years, but now it's 22. All of a sudden, as of today, um, 22 years ago, I was selling, you know, coffee and Lego and clothes and video games and all kinds of random stuff, cigars, like whatever I could find, you know, a way to like buy and resell at a profit. I was selling those things on eBay and other auction sites. I wasn't particularly passionate about any one of those categories. You know, I would have sold any, I would have sold hardware or something I don't know anything at all about. Um, but what was exciting to me was this act of like learning to do it and learning to buy and sell and learning to make money for myself. And so it actually was very exciting despite the item or the category it had nothing to do with, you know, what the specific thing was. So keep that in mind. So, um, here is our challenge. Let's see if I got this one, right? Like put this together, like very quickly before, um, we started. So if you're trying to figure out, uh, what is my skill or what, what are some of my skills? Sometimes people get stuck and they don't know how to think they're like, well, I have this degree or I do this day job but how does that transfer to this world? And so this is what you can do. Often your friends, your colleagues, people around you are better at identifying like what that thing is, you know, within you that you know about that can be monetized, uh, than you are. Okay. So my challenge to you is, is to ask a few of your friends and colleagues, you know, maybe virtually at this point. Um, but obviously we're all in touch with people through social networks, through texting, through whatever else, you know, just go to them and say, Hey, I'm trying to figure out, you know, uh, a way to start something during this time. It's not going to be unusual. They're probably just trying to do the same thing. Uh, do you have any input on me? Like, what are my skills? What do you think that I'm good at? What do you think that I am particularly good at? 
You know, like there's all kinds of stuff I'm not good at probably, but what is that thing that I'm good at? Um, you can also think about if you, like if you have a job that involves collaboration with people, uh, think about when there's a meeting and people are assigning different tasks and they're like, hey, Ivan should do this thing. We've got five things that need to be done. Tina, you know, needs to do this thing because she is really good at X. So that's often a sign that people are recognizing a skill. Uh, and then related, if there's a topic that people are always asking you about, then this is also like a sign that, this, that you are this authority in some space um, and that there is demand for that information or knowledge. Um, and a lot of the, the projects that we featured on the podcast and in my books have come about from people just noticing that and realizing like, oh, I never thought that, you know, this thing that comes very easy to me is actually difficult to other people or this thing that I thought was very random and like I was the only person interested in it. There's actually a lot of other people interested in it too. So this is a good starting point for people. Um, don't follow your passion. Think about your passions, um, but think about what you're really good at. And my encouragement to you is to ask uh, your friends or colleagues, you know, for a couple of those, those ideas and let's see what we can do with it. Um, let's see what we can do as we uh, build and go forward. So um, let me share as well before we wrap up the creed. Um, this is what it's all about. First of all, I should have said at the beginning, I'm doing this every single day. Uh, my name is Chris Gillibo. If we haven't met before, I'm doing this every day, every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk through stuff just as we've been doing. Um, as we go forward, I'm going to share some more specific stories, uh, emails I get and such, um, and teach more in depth on these topics. So you can kind of figure out what can I do for myself? How can I find that opportunity in the uncertainty? Uh, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. If you don't mind, if you're watching, that would be so awesome. That just helps YouTube and the algorithms and such. Um, you can also subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get notifications um, when I go live. Um, everything here is free, as mentioned, and ultimately here is what it's all about. Um, three things. One I just talked about. Uh, with uncertainty comes opportunity. In this time of, of trial, chaos, disorder, you know, everything is upside down. Um, this also presents opportunities. And whenever there is progress, some people are harmed. Like there's always winners and losers. So if there's progress and people are harmed or industries are harmed, et cetera, the same is true for disruption. Disruption has lots of negative adverse effects, but yet some people or some industries will benefit. So you want to ask like, how can I, how can I benefit? Uh, how can I, you know, adapt, pivot, switch, et cetera. Number two, nobody will care as much as you do. Uh, ultimately, you know, you're the one who's going to have to take action, even if you have a good job, even if you uh, are feeling comfortable and not feeling the financial pressure that I'm talking about. Uh, well, you're the one who has to build that security for yourself. Um, nobody will be as invested as you. And then last but not least, uh, you can do more than you think, which is, by the way, let me see if I can go back here. This is um, very much a key theme of the new book, The Money Tree, which is now out. Um, I'm like, where is the money? Oh, oh here it is. Okay. Um, which is now out in stores, although stores are not out. It's weird. The book is out in stores, but stores are not out. Um, however, it is available on all the online retailers, um, Amazon, BN.com, Audible. I recorded the audiobook myself. Um, of course, there's Kindle version, et cetera, Apple Books, if you like that, Google Play Store, and you can support a local bookstore if you know their website. You can order directly through them. Um, so the book is a story called uh, a story about finding the fortune in your own backyard. And you can see I have a money tree here, by the way. Actually, it's over there. I mean, it's it's meant to go with the book, you know, just in case that's not obvious. Um, it's a story of somebody who's trying to navigate all this stuff, and it's meant to be like entertaining and enjoyable. Um, and so you don't necessarily, you know read it to, to like acquire a bunch of lessons, but you will acquire some lessons and they'll kind of sink in in a way that's different from reading a how-to or a business book. So if you know somebody actually who is struggling during this time and trying to figure something out, then um, this would be a great um, gift for them. And as I said, this is the only thing I'm promoting during this whole time. I want to show up and do everything I can uh, to help people for free. So thank you so much for coming on. Just a quick little look here. Yes, thanks so much. Um, you're all so kind. You are amazing. It's the birthday of the book and mine as well. Um, but thank you for sharing this space. Let's keep collaborating together. We're going to co-create this process um, as I go every single day. Um, so thank you for your questions. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow and I hope you will join me.